Welcome to 3 Minute Movies, where I'll review a movie in 3 minutes or less. I'm film enthusiast Chris Oxenford, and let's get started. A storm's going to destroy the world. It cannot be stopped, but it can be survived. Mother! When you stand alone and defy me, I'm not alone. We have to protect our son. The end of everything. Beginning. Noah, March 28th. The biblical story of Noah is one of the first that most children learn in Sunday school. Sometime after Cain murdered Abel, God decides that man has become corrupt and evil and decides to destroy the world with a flood. God also decides that he will spare Noah and his family because they are the last good people in the world. He instructs Noah to build an ark and preserve two of every living creature. Noah builds the ark and fills it with animals. Then it rains for 40 days and 40 nights. Eventually, the rain stops and Noah sends out a dove to find dry land. The first time he does this, the dove returns with nothing. But the second time, a week later, the dove brings back a branch, indicating that the waters are receding. Noah and his family settle the new dry land and God puts a rainbow in the heavens to indicate that he will never again drown the world. Most of these plot elements are present in the new movie Noah, created by Darren Aronofsky, but Aronofsky has taken huge liberties with the story. Now, some of these liberties make sense in order to give the film conflict and plot. For instance, he's created a villain character, Tubal Cain, played by Ray Stevenson, to represent everything that is wicked and that God has decided to destroy. Listen, the creator does not care what happens in this world. He has also made Noah himself into a much more conflicted character than he is typically depicted as. Our family has been chosen for a great task. To save the innocent. The innocent? The animals. Why are they innocent? Because they still live as they did in the garden. In this film, Noah is convinced that God has decided that his family should be the last people on earth. Only a last minute change of heart prevents this version of Noah from carrying out a truly despicable act. But for all the changes that Aronofsky made that somewhat make sense, many of the changes he made do not. One of the key conflicts early in the film is between several fallen angels and Noah, which adds little to the plot except confusion and some special effects. Moreover, what was key in the original story, the gathering of the animals, is compressed into three shots and some sleeping magic. Indeed, magic of all forms seems to be very present in this film, much more so than in the original story. From a magic tea that lets Noah talk to God, to a magic seed that grows a forest so he can build an ark, to the magic flood that drowns the world, to the magic stones that allow Noah and his family to light fires. Magic and miracles are very prevalent in this world. If you're looking for a film that adapts the biblical story you learned as a kid, this is definitely not the movie for you. But it's certainly an interesting take on the original. I'm Chris Oxenford. Thank you for watching. When tyrants ruled the world, I'm your king, this all belongs to me. And wickedness ruled the hearts of men. One man fought for something more. Our family is a great task. We need to save the innocent. Did you think you could protect yourself in that? It's not protection from you. Your time is done. Noah, in theaters and IMAX, March 28th.